Hi, my name is Ying Gao and welcome to Dr. Gao's classroom. I'm a professional philosopher and I love classical Chinese poetry. I have been translating classical Chinese poetry for the last few years with a colleague of mine. So I would love to share my knowledge with you. Your enjoyment is my command. Today, I'm going to translate and analyze two poems about romantic love. One by my favorite poet, Wang Wei. If you would like to know more about Wang Wei, here are the three videos I made about him. The other one is by the great poet Li Bai, and here are the two videos I made about Li Bai. I also made two videos about the possible rivalry between the two poets. Here they are. In my next video, I'm going to introduce another poet. He is one of the best poets known for poetry on romantic love from Tang Dynasty. His name is Yuan Zhen, a scholar official from a aristocrat's family. The royal family Mulan used to fight for 300 years earlier. If you would like to know about Mulan, here are the two videos I made on the poem that the Disney movies are based on. If you're new to my channel, please check out my other videos on classical Chinese poetry, philosophy, and medical literature. If you like the content of these videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons for these subjects. So if you would like to read the original text with me, please contact me. Here's my email address. Now, let's look at the two love poems. The poem by Wang Wei is a short one. The title of the poem is Xiang Si. Xiang Si is a term specifically referring to the emotions related to romantic love, such as longing, yearning and missing or melancholy a person might have for his or her love interest. For instance, xiang si bing literally means love sickness. There are also things that are symbolic for romantic love such as xiang si dou. There are several kind of pea or bean got the name of xiang si dou. The most valuable one is the pea commonly known as the red lucky seed grow in the tropics. It is highly valued for its heart-like shape representing romantic love. There are also other kind of peas are being used as symbols for romantic love. They were used in jewelries and sent to loved ones as gifts. Hong Dou mentioned in this poem refers to any of these kind of peas and beans. Now, let me read the poem in Chinese. Hong Dou Seng Nan Guo Chun Lai Fa Ji Zhi Yuan Jun Duo Chai Xie Chi Wu Zui Xiang Si. Now, let's look at them line by line. Hong Dou Seng Nan Guo Chun Lai Fa Ji Zhi. Hong Dou refers to the rosary pea. Seng means grow, Nan means soften, Guo means land. Since there are several kinds of Hong Dou, and rosary pea is the better known one in English than the other peas or beans. So my colleague and I just translated it as rosary pea. Chun means spring, Lai means come, Fa means sprout, Ji means a field, Zhi means twig. So the two lines read, the rosary pea grows in the south. When spring comes, it puts out a few twigs. Yuan Jun Duo Chai Xie Chi Wu Zui Xiang Si. Yuan means would like or wish. Jun means you. Duo means a lot. Chai means gather. 
xie means select, chi means this, wu means thing, zui means most, but here it means best. Xiang si means love. So the two lines read, I would like you to gather a lot of them, as they are the best token of my love. So this poem uses the simplest language to express the most profound emotion, and it is just so easy to remember. That is probably why it is still one of the most popular romantic poems today in China. The imagery is also quite simple, but quite striking. Imagine you are in a garden at the spring, all the plants and trees come into life with their tender green sprouts in contrast to the vibrant red of the rosary pea. The poet is not saying how much he loves her, but asking her to remember the love they share by gathering the pea. It is not clear when Wang Wei composed this poem or for whom. Some literary critics argue that it was for a friend because the poem allegedly has another title called Jiang Shang Zheng Li Gui Nian or dedicated to Li Gui Nian on a river. And Li, a court musician, sang the poem in a few occasions. However, I still believe the poem is about romantic love rather than friendship because firstly, the title Xiang Si is the specific term for romantic love. Secondly, the rosary pea is also a symbolic item specific for romantic love. Although Wang Wei did not so much interest in romantic love after he started practicing Buddhism, he never forgot his late wife. It simply makes more sense to read this poem as a romantic love song. Now, let's look at the second poem by Li Bai. I always believe there was a rivalry, a bit of rivalry between Li Bai and Wang Wei, so let's just add a bit more fuel to this potential rivalry by comparing their poems on romantic love. Li Bai's poem is in the title of San Wu Qi Yan Qiu Feng Chi, a lyric on autumn wind with three, five, and seven characters. Now, let me explain the title. In the Chinese calendar, the spring is for generating new life, summer is for growth, and winter is for rest and stock up energy. The autumn is quite a unique season because it is the season of killing. This is because the chilly autumn wind from the west brought the death of many plants and insects. So it is regarded as the heavenly sign permitting killing. This is why prisoners on death row often were executed in autumn in the imperial China. There was even a term for this practice called Qiu Hou Wen Zhan, to be executed by autumn. So autumn is also the season for hunting and raising a military campaign because killing in autumn would not violate the Tao of Heaven. Even today, autumn and early November are the time to execute prisoners on death row in China. On the other hand, spring was the time to pardon prisoners on death row if the emperor would like to show more generosities. So, if you are smart, do not commit a serious crime before autumn. Of course, one should not commit a crime at any time of the year. So, for many scholars, autumn is the season to mourn the death of many forms of lives. Another cultural significance is not based on the Chinese cosmology, but based on cultural tradition. A poet from early Warring State period named Sheng Yu composed a poem in the title of Jiu Bian, or the Nine Apologies. 
The poem is very, very long. It lists nine aspects of why autumn is a such a sad season. It would be too much to even summarize all of the nine apologies here. The relevant themes related to Li Bai's poem are that the generic melancholy one feels about all the thriving life form of the summer are gone, and that one is separated from the loved ones and could not be united with them, even though this is the season for family reunion. If you recall my video on Moon Festival, um, you know, the Moon Festival is for family reunion for all the Chinese. And the other fact is that many scholars set off to the capital during autumn for the National Civil Service Examination to be held in the spring. So it is also a time that the family were separated. Now, let me read the poem in Chinese. 秋风清秋月明早知如此半人心，还如当初不相识。Now let's look at the first four lines. 秋风清，秋月明，落叶寄还山，寒鸦栖复惊。秋 means autumn. 风 means wind. 清 means clear. Qiu again means autumn. Yue means moon. Ming means bright. Luo means fall. Ye means leaf. Ju means gather. Huan means then. San means scatter. Hanya refers to jackdaw. Qi means settle on a branch. Fu means repeat. So we translate it as then and add the over and over to express its meaning of repetition. Jing means startle. So the four lines read clear autumn breeze, bright autumn moon. Fallen leaves gather, then scatter. The jackdaw settles, then startles over and over. Xiang si, xiang jian, zi he ri. 此时此夜难为情。Xiang means each other. Si means thinking or missing. Xiang again means each other. Jian means see. Zi means no. He ri means which day. So Xiang si here literally means thinking or missing each other. But as we mentioned in the last poem, it is a specific term refers to emotions related to romantic love. Here Li Bai is playing with the term to express the double meaning of missing each other, but also the love sickness of romantic love. The repetition of the character Xiang is also matched with the character Ci in the next line giving the two lines a rhythmic quality. 此时此夜难为情 So 此 means this, 时 means moment, 此 again means this, 夜 means night, 难 means hot, 为情 means to bear. So the two lines read, thinking of each other, do we know which day we will see each other? Right now, this night, I can no longer bear it. 入我相思门,知我相思苦。入 means inter, 我 means my. 相思 means love sickness, 门 means gate or door. So 入门 
literally means entering a door or a gate. However, it is also a generic term referring to entering a domain or entering a mental state. And because it is connected with xiang si, so we put the two terms together and translated them as fall in love. Zhi means no, wo again means my. Xiang si means love sickness and ku means bitterness. So the two lines read, if you fall in love, you will know the bitterness of love sickness. 长相思兮,长相意,短相思兮,无穷极. 长 means long. 相思 again means love sickness. 西 is a linking word and has no meaning here. 长 again means long. 相思 and 相意 have similar connotations, meaning missing each other, so we just translate them both as love sickness. 短 means short. 相思 again means love sickness. And 西 is the linking word again. 无 means no. 穷极 means limit. So the two lines read, long love sickness, long love sickness. A momentary longing knows no limit. 早知如此半人心,还如当初不相识. 早 means early, 知 again means no, 如此 means as such. So it refers to the fact that the poet's heart was trapped like this. 半 means trap, 人心 literally means human heart. But here it refers to the poet's heart that had fallen in love and suffering from love sickness. So we just translate the term as my heart. Huan Ru is a alternative way of Bu Ru, meaning rather not. Dang Chu means from the onset. Bu means not. Xiang again means each other. Shi means no. So xiang shi literally means get to know each other. It is often interchangeable with xiang yu or meeting each other. So we translate them as meet. So the two lines read, If I knew from onset my heart would be trapped, I would rather we had never met at all. So Li Bai's poem is more straightforward than Wang Wei's in terms of expressing romantic love. It borrows from the rich cultural significance of the autumn wind to express love sickness, as well as a generic melancholy, often expressed by people in the autumn about the fading and dying of many forms of lives. I think the autumn wind also has a specific significance for Li Bai. The poem was allegedly composed in 756 AD, only six years before he passed away. By this time, Li Bai had pretty much given up all his political ambition and lived a life of Taoist hermit. Even at the autumn of his life, he still held strong emotions towards others. Maybe he met someone, or maybe he was imagining someone who was experiencing love sickness. We would never know. What we do know is that Li Bai never gave up on love. In my next video, I'm going to translate another poem on romantic love by a different poet from Tang Dynasty named Yuan Zhen, who was a quite controversial figure. Although he was a successful official, achieved a very high rank in the bureaucratic system, and one of the best points for poetry on romantic love, he had a reputation of being a despicable man when it comes to romantic love. Well, you know why <laughs> in my next video. If you're new to my channel, please check out my other videos on Classical Chinese poetry, if you like the content of my videos, please click the like button and subscribe my channel. 
I also offer one-to-one -one online lessons on classical Chinese poetry, philosophies, and medical literature. If you're interested in reading these classics with me, please contact me by my email. Otherwise, thank you for viewing my video and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.